Hi, I'm Monty McKinnon. Thank you for joining me. It is now 2022, and that's a good thing because that means 21 and 20 and 19 are all behind us, and we don't have to look backwards. We just look to the future, and it's going to be a good year. Today's video is not about looking back, but it's about looking to the future. Today, I want to talk about the fastest two ways you can lose your fingers in a wood shop. So pay attention, follow this video please right to the end because it's important that you, you get this message. Safety in the workshop is critical for all of us. So the first point I wanna raise, never go into a workshop to do any kind of work when you're tired. I know it sounds simple and it's not a big deal. Oh, I'm a little tired today. Well, good for you. Don't do it because that's when you make mistakes. Let me give you an example right here on the guitar that we're working on. First of all, over on the side here, you'll see I have a planer, and here you'll see a video of me planing a beautiful fingerboard. Now, I had saved this piece of wood for well over a year. I could not wait to cut it and, and just do it and do it right. And so I planed the side, but I didn't notice I took a little too much pressure on one end of the board. So consequently, if you will, if we look at this as the board, this end was a little narrow. So when I put it onto this particular jig, what happened is, to exaggerate, if this is the fingerboard, it would be like this. Okay? And I got it on straight here on the bottom, and you'll see in, in the picture here, the pin, which is the other part, what you do is you line that up so that there are little notches here in this jig, and your fingerboard, which is taped here with double-sided tape, simply goes on the table saw and then moves across and cuts and moves across and cuts, and, and it does it perfectly. Oh, it's a great, great jig and honestly it saves you hours and it's accurate if the wood is straight and i didn't notice that i'd save this piece of wood for so long and it's a gorgeous piece of wood and so when i got it and i looked at it and i thought those fret lines don't look straight to me they got to be off cockeyed and so i my wife walked into the workshop here and she was at the far end of the shop. I said, what do you think of this piece of wood? She says, why have you got the lines running kind of crooked? And I thought, well, if you can see that from the far end, it's, it's done. So I had no choice. This broke my heart. And then like normally I would try to fix something like that. I could have filled those, turned it over, done the other side, I'd bind the ends. You'd never see it, you'd never know but I'd know, and so that just didn't sit with me. So I snapped the board in half, and I threw it over here into the garbage so that I would not repair it. That was a disastrous mistake, and I made that mistake because I was tired. Honestly, that's the sort of thing where you can get your hand caught in, in the planer. You, you, you're just doing dumb things and you're not thinking. So you've got to be able to be sharp and think. Let me give you a second example. Right here, as you know, I've got inserts embedded here in the end of the neck. This is to bolt on to the body of the guitar like this. Okay, so that's all well and good. When I was working on putting in the inserts. This became another disaster right here, these inserts. And I'm gonna, like this was awful. This is for me just about the most difficult thing I can do. And I'm gonna show you how I do it. Because this is on an angle here, and it's exactly the same angle as the top and the front of the guitar body. I measure that, I put it on there, I cut it to, to, to work. And then what I do is I take this. Now this here is the top of my drill press. And I turn the table of the drill press so that it's like this. I then take the neck and I fasten it here with clamps. 
and I take all kinds of time and trouble to get this lined up perfectly so that the holes that I'm going to drill go right into the center between the two pieces of rosewood I have there and go the right depth so that when I screw them in, it's perfect. Well, these are screwed in and they're, they're perfectly screwed in all right. Not a problem. But what I didn't notice, because I was tired, is the weight of this when I had it, and this is steel, what it did is it, it did this. Okay, I'm going to exaggerate. There's, there's kind of, this is not the slope, but we'll say it is. What it did is it went down like that, and I didn't notice that. So when I drilled it, the holes did not quite line up with the holes in the guitar body. Now that presents a problem because here's the head block that's in the body of the guitar. And as you can see, the holes are pre-drilled and then this bolt and a washer fits in here. If I can get that in there perfectly. And there is no room. The washer is the size of this circle. And there it is there sticking out and then it just simply bolts on. Well, guess what? If this is offline, because this neck doesn't line up properly, then this is not going to screw in. Like, they don't line up. What do you do? Well, the solution for me on this particular piece of wood was to take it and enlarge the hole on the body of the guitar just slightly so that this body would, the hole would come down and line up with the bolt and it's not a big deal because these are all put in with Starbond glue and you know I've told you about Starbond before it works so well and it's in there and nice and snug and tight and I've tested it and it's all good and it lines up perfectly. But that's the kind of mistake you make when you're tired and you could just as easily damage your hand, cut off your fingers on a, the table saw if I wasn't paying attention and you saw that saw blade. Now it's not up that high, but because it's just cutting the slots, but it's so easy to have an accident. And I know a number of people that have actually damaged their hands on table saws, on band saws. Now that brings us to point number two. Never use a tool in your shop on which you've not been trained. You must know how to use your power tools, even your hand tools, because you can get yourself into a lot of trouble. For example, in the next video, you'll see me cutting the headstock, and I'm cutting this down to a rough size. I'm not cutting it down to the line. It's outboard of the line. I actually use this block here. It's got a number nine on it. Now I've done this many, 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 many times. So I'm very familiar. But if you don't get somebody to show you how to do it, and this video is not meant to show you how to do that, you need to have somebody teach you how to do that because that could be very dangerous and it's not smart. I've met people who have lost their fingers on a bandsaw. I've met people who have lost their fingers on the table saw. Table saw only spins at about 90 miles an hour, so when that piece of wood or your finger comes shooting off at 90 miles an hour, don't do it. Okay, stay away from the power tools uh, unless you know how to use them because it is extremely, extremely dangerous. Now, once I have this rough cut done, the next thing I do is I go to the router table. Now, if you don't have a router table, great. I'm going to show you other ways to do all of this without using power tools that are safe, okay? I'll show you that in just a second. But if you have a router table, you'll notice that with this collar, you have sticking up through the middle of it, if you will, something that looks like this, and that's your blade open, spinning at 10,000 revs a minute. That's pretty fast. So it will, t it will take your hand off or your finger off or cause a serious accident nothing flat because if it grabs wood the wrong way and throws the wood on you and your hand goes across there like that, you're done. 
you, 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 you've had an accident. Listen, I had a brand new rotor with a very flexible uh, cord plugged into the wall using it. And I picked it up and you'll see here where I've got it all lined up to carve out the piece in here, okay? I need that carved out, and, and you'll understand why later on as we shape the, that to, to make it all fit the body nice and neat. And I picked it up like this, and without thinking, maybe a little tired, I did this, and the flexible cord came across the rotor bit, just like that. Tripped the electric thing in the, in, the, in the power panel and cut right through my wire and I had to rewire the, the router. So it happens in an instant. So you have to be careful. Oh man, if I made this video five hours long, I would be telling you over and over again to be careful, be careful, be careful, because an accident like this can do a lot of damage. Now, take a look here as I'm using the router table to shape this down to size. You can see very clearly the amount of dust that's coming off. My hands are on the top here. Now, I have the, the template underneath. The template runs against the collar so that it, it keeps it outboard. That's why you don't cut it right down to the line and you're all good to go. And for me, I've done this again a number of times, but I was taught by my mentor how to do this. I can remember the first time I saw that, I thought, wow, that's something else. Now, let me tell you, there's also, because it's called a climb cut, a way to do this. You don't just attack this thing with the router sticking up and then just run it around or it's it's going to cause a problem. You have to go one way. We go up this way, we go here, we go to the middle, and then I come from the middle back this way, and then I come back down this way, and I go this way. So you, you don't go the same way all the way around until you've got your final cut done. So there's a technique to that. Now, if that makes you nervous, and it should, there are other things you can do. There's a spindle sander, and you've seen me use that. It's flat, and it, the spindle goes up and down, and it moves back and forth in there. You can actually draw this on there, and you can, if you want, rough cut it, but you don't have to use a bandsaw. Use your coping saw. This is what we used when we were in grade eight. Remember, guys? Grade six, we learned how to use a coping saw. I still use this. All right, and it was a coping saw blade that I used to do the, the uh, sound port on this guitar with all the fancy little curves in it. That's how I did it. it it's, it's all with that. So what you do is you simply run your coping saw along here and cut it out, come down close to the line. Once you've got that, then what you can do is do this. This is a piece of PVC pipe I've got a whole bunch of tape wrapped around this and sometimes when I don't need the, the tape and I, I just use the straight PVC pipe I just simply do this until I get it down to the actual size and the line that I want now somewhere else I have a jig here which I use on the, the neck up here to get the right angle I want up here it also happens to be the same angle down here so the piece of sandpaper can go on here like this and you can go back and forth like this. So you don't need the power tools in order to do that. And it's, it's probably advisable not to use the power tools. Unless, of course, you've been trained how to do it and you know exactly how to do it. All right, you don't have a handy piece of, uh, of PVC pipe handy? Get a file. It's got a curved edge and file it. And then take your piece of wood and, and then once you've got it down close to the line, do your sanding again like this. And you do the same thing at the top, whatever the shape of your peg head is. So those are two very, very important uh, things that you've got to remember because 
you can so quickly have a serious accident and I don't want that to happen. So remember, never work in your, power, in, in your workshop if you're tired, even slightly tired, don't do it. Second thing, don't use any power tool, don't use your table saw, don't use any of that other equipment, the routers and, and the band saws and all that, unless you're confident and you've been trained and you know what you're doing. Be very, very careful. So when I'm working the router table, I want no distractions. I don't want anybody around me. I turn my phone off. I want to focus totally on what I'm doing so that I don't make any mistakes. And I have not made any at this point. So that's a little bit of what we do to stay safe in the shop. And it's important that we all stay safe. So thank you for watching. Thank you for putting up with me. Thank you for subscribing. Thank you for your comments. I really do read all your comments and I do appreciate them. And here we go. We're, we're into a new, uh, a new year and a new season. We're, we've got some great things coming for you. I, I'm, I'm hoping that we can have a couple of giveaways shortly that will um, really inspire you. I, I've got some uh, an announcement coming a little later that will really, really interest you in what I'm about to do. So we're, I think I have a solution for these, these shaking hands of mine. <laughs> it's more than drinking decaf tea. So thanks for the watch. Thanks for hanging in here. And now it's time for the English breakfast tea. This is the drink of those who are sophisticated and love nice tea and really enjoy that nice hot cup of tea that soothes so much. I'm going to send some to Buckingham Palace. I think the queen for her 70th year on the throne should have a special cup of tea. And I, I think English breakfast might appeal to her. I know she's an Earl Grey fan, but why? <laughs> I have no idea. Anyway, there you go. We'll see you in the next video. Thanks so much for joining me. Bye for now.